Hey guys, Greg at Best Choice Trailers here. Today we're gonna to take a walk around a short track, seven by 20, 9,900 pound GVW power tilt car hauler. Shown here, everything is standard equipment on this model trailer. Uh, technically, I guess the power uh, could be considered an option, but again, standard for our intents and purposes. This is how we order it. So nothing really new for 2021. Just hadn't had a video of this particular model in the past. I wanted to take you around and show you everything that's standard on this particular unit. Start out up front, it's got a 2 and 5 16 inch stamp coupler. Pretty traditional uh, style coupler. So it's got an A-frame toolbox. Now different manufacturers do them different ways. Short track on this, again, power is kind of technically an option. So they set it up for a manual tilt. When you go to power, uh, it's going to switch out to a power cylinder. Uh, toolbox up front in the A-frame, you've got your 7K drop leg jack. If you're not familiar with the drop leg jack, you'd simply release the pin. You've got an inner leg that's got quite a bit of adjustment, and then you've also got the sleeve there that you would see where the pin's at that'll also adjust. With this style jack, there's no reason to have a wood block or similar. You got plenty of extension there. So there are integrated hooks for your safety chains, and of course, safety chains are standard required equipment. You've got your breakaway cable. Uh, it is a sealed seven pin plug and if we trace it back you'll notice there is an integrated plug holder a couple other another couple little details short track does extra reinforcement in the tongue area where the toolbox is uh, notice that they've got not only is this unit uh, powered down and hydraulically locked in place but there's also a separate uh, latch assembly Everything's junction box, grommeted, wired in frame. Notice the cylinder's got Zert on it. Also on the jack, you've got a Zert for serviceability. The jack on this is bolt on, not weld on. So everything Short Track does, we like just finished out nice, grommeted, nice clean. Doesn't have the rough edges that we sometimes see on some of our other brands or some of the other stuff in the marketplace. 4D rings are standard. They put them in standard placement for a car. Uh, one of my pet peeves, oftentimes, manufacturers will put D rings over here, right by a seg pocket, where you already have a tie down. So Short Track sets this up. D rings in placement for a car. You also have your rub rail and your stake pockets for additional tie downs, one down the sides. So this particular unit is powder coated. Short Track does a nice job with their uh, blasting and prep. If I get you a close up, you'll notice. Uh, not a lot of weld splatter, nice clean prep job. Bullet LEDs are now standard equipment on most of the short tracks, including this one. So on a car hauler tilt, there's a few delineations that we consider a car hauler tilt different than an equipment tilt, and they are for different end users. So you've got a tongue that comes back to a pivot point, and at this point, your tongue and your mainframe separate. This would be what we would call internally a two-frame tilt, meaning you've got a tongue and a mainframe Whereas on an equipment trailer, uh, built a little bit different, designed more for equipment, it would actually have a nestled bed frame inside generally is how they're manufactured. So this is a two frame tilt ideal for cars, possibly compact tractors, very light equipment, but not your full size skid steers and whatnot. Now as a car hauler tilt, this one is uh, fairly well constructed. Instead of just having a tongue and a, a main frame, there's also what we call an under frame bridge in that most critical area where you'd have the vast majority of your load over the axles and then your most critical point here between your tongue and your axle area. So that underframe bridge looks to be about a two by three inch tube. Other details Short Track does, they take in silicone your joints between the tongue and frame and then on your fender backers and such to help keep any corrosive uh, material out. So fenders on these are upgraded to a tread plate fender. They started that probably a year or so ago. Gives it a little bit nicer look, a little bit heavier duty. Short track also, we really like how they do their removable fenders. Uh, a lot in the industry are gonna bolt either a single bolt or one per side. This actually slips right in pretty slick. Uh, we've got car show customers that occasionally have had too much to drink. So long as they can slip the front in that slot and drop this down on, even without a wing nut, I'd say there's a half decent chance that it might actually stay uh, for a little bit, but obviously you've got your nut and then actually a safety built in as well. Very slick design, uh, no tools required. 
Uh, this fender is removable to the point where a guy will actually use it. Some removable fenders are removable, but they just require enough work to where the average guy's probably never going to use them. Radial tires are standard equipment being a 10K. It's going to be a 225-75R15 load range D. That's going to be an 8-ply tire. It's got a 6-lug hub. Now, when you go to a 10K trailer, you upgrade from a 10 to a 12-inch brake assembly. This is actually the same brake assembly you're going to find on a... Uh, on a uh, 6 and 7K axle on a 12 and 14K trailer. So 10K trailers give you a pretty sufficient amount of brakes. Uh, 10Ks like this one, it is an eye to eye suspension. And then you'll notice uh, at the black cap on the end of the hub, that's gonna be your easy loop hub. Average homeowner can do their own bearing maintenance. Notice the, uh, the green cap on that, it is a nitrogen filled tire. And the wheel on these are a uh, silver wagon wheel silver just uh, seems to look a little nicer a little bit longer uh, this is also the newer style Ford adjusting brakes if you're not familiar you can look them up sometimes you'll see them noted as an FSA forward self-adjust uh, simply means just like a car they're gonna uh, they get tension closed throughout the life of the brake and uh, very minimal maintenance to them Brakes are standard, uh, both axles on this particular unit, so both axles have brakes. So one other difference, on a car hauler tilt, you've got lumber coming all the way to the back, so inherently you got about an inch and a half, a little more than uh, for a knife edge, certainly more than enough for a car to go up, where an equipment tilt, normally you'll see tread plate at the back roughly two foot, and it'll knife down to about five sixteenths of an inch. So D-rings all the way to the back, LED light, sealed beam. You know, like this is going to weigh in at about 2,500 pounds. It's going to give a net legal payload of about 7,500. Also going to pick up a little bit of truck side tongue weight. This trailer is going to sit about 21 inches off the ground. I believe this particular unit loads at about a 12 and a half or so degree angle. Sufficient enough for most, uh, most vehicles. Maybe not some of your sports cars and your customs, but... An average car, SUV, van, truck, etc. Spare tire mount is standard equipment. Pretty much always passenger side, about halfway between the uh, between the headache rack and the uh, axles. So on a 10K trailer, normally you're gonna have a five inch tongue and frame. Now generally that's gonna be channel. Now on this particular unit where they're going for maximum strength, uh, it's actually gonna be tube tongue and a tube frame. Gives you a little bit more strength per pound than channel still the same size extrusion and one thing also generally a 10k car hauler is going to have a 24 on center floor this is actually going to be a 16 so on the tilt where you're losing a little bit of strength it's not welded fast uh, again they upgrade to a 16 inch on center on this let's go ahead and put the bed up for you could have done that easier to make it a little easier to see underneath so this would generally be on a vehicle obviously this isn't a, a perfectly accurate um, example here because obviously our coupler is a lot lower than it should be but you'll notice uh, if you are on a difficult angle it will still go a little bit past where it should on the angle it's down to the ground so on a tilt, it's going to be a little different in a regular car hauler if you're looking solely at angle because on this, uh, you've only got one brake in the plane where a traditional car hauler, you'd have two. Normally your headers and that, if they were catch, would be on the second uh, brake. It's also on a tilt because the axles are generally slid a little bit farther forward, you're going to have a longer tongue. So traditionally a tongue is going to be generally a little under four foot, about, you can figure, 41, two inches. This one here is about a foot longer than a normal car hauler. It does a few things. Get your tongue weight back to uh, a better percentage than would otherwise. Uh, the tongue also hits at a wider stance the longer it is, which is going to make it a little bit more stable. Let's give you one more look underneath. So again, 3-inch uh, cross member 16 on center instead of the 24 that you would normally find. is available in different lengths 7 by 18 and 7 by 20 10k 7 by 18 7,000 pound and 7 by 20 10,000 pound 
uh, would be our most common. Other sizes are available. We also do some of these with the steel tread plate floor instead of the wood floor. Uh, probably one of the more common options on these would be a winch plate up front. Uh, you've already got a battery on board, so it makes it a little bit easier if somebody wants to add a winch to this particular trailer. If you have any questions on this or any of your other trailers, feel free to give us a ring at 717-220-4220. Or you can visit us on the web at bestchoicetrailers.com. Thanks for looking.